Hey, I'm Tessa. And I'm Jalen. And welcome to Underdog Approved. In Underdog Approved, we judge movies, TV shows, and other stories on how they represent minorities, women, LGBT characters, and all underdogs. Then we give the story a score and our underdog rating. Today we'll be talking about the live action remake of Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> we all think that the animated one is much better than this most recent one. Right, so we're not going to talk about parts we hated about the remake, like the unnecessary lyric changes, the Beast's terrible new solo, Gaston having a gun, the Enchantress being too relevant, Mrs. Potts' terrible makeup, the way Gaston dies, that weird memory thing no one wanted, <laughs> and then everyone in Baroque France is English. <laughs> <laughs> So when we look at the way this movie reflects underdogs, we're going to focus on the way it's different from the original. First of all, there was a little bit of improvement in the feminism category of things, especially with Belle. For one, she's an inventor now instead of just like a bookworm, mm -hmm. and she actually saved her father instead of just being like, I'm going to take his place. <laughs> they made her take yeah. action. So also the mob at the end, which in the original was just men, in the remake was almost equally parts women and men. So women were busting down the door and like... They were able to be beat and also kick the <laughs> out of some random household objects. But there was a lot of negative women changes that happened between the original and the remake. I know that Belle, like her name is Belle and she's supposed to be all beautiful. They really overplayed her being pretty in this. Like every time she met somebody, Lumiere was like, Oh look, a beautiful girl! And Mrs. Potts was like, Oh, aren't you a vision? Like the whole makeover thing. That too. For underdogs, makeovers to impress a man, that's bad. Also, she doesn't teach the Beast to read, which I find really annoying because that was one of my favorite scenes. And they just got rid of it. I know they made her an inventor instead of just being a bookworm, but her whole thing is that she is not just pretty, she's also super smart. And her teaching the Beast how to read is like one of the ways that they actually like connected as people. And we know that she knows how to do it because in the beginning of the movie she's sitting by the laundry thing teaching a little girl how to read. Exactly. So like she used to be able to read, just not like the guy she loves because yeah. he knows how to do everything. Loves. He's a man. We're not gonna begin that debate. <laughs> We're not going to the Stockholm syndrome thing. My favorite part is the fact that it passes the Bechdel test but only one of them is human, the other is an uh, animated teapot. Can't have two women in the same movie unless one of them is not human. There's like, oh, there's four people of color in this. Two of which are an inanimate object for the majority <laughs> of the movie. <laughs> there's the black dude who's unfaithful to his wife. Bonjour, good day, how is your family? Bonjour, good day, how is your wife? The thing with the librarian is, we didn't really see much of him. What we did see, he was just cleaning around instead of looking at books. I mean, he didn't really have many books. There were only like seven of them, maybe? Can he even be called a librarian? <laughs> if that's the case, I'm a librarian. He's just a man who owns books. Another thing about the librarian is, he was, especially in this longer movie, they added a bunch of plot lines and they got time to put more depth into other characters, but they decided to not go into the librarian character, even though he's very clearly an important character because he's the only one who doesn't treat Belle as weird. He obviously promoted her love of books because there's no way she got that from her dad. At the end, when they're shoving Belle's dad into the asylum thing, the librarian actually actually speaks up. He's weak, please! He needs a hospital! Not an asylum! And he's the one who doesn't sing in the mob song. He's like clearly a character who has great opportunity for depth. And yet They were like, no, we can't we can't waste our time on that. The main reason we decided to do an underdog proved of the live action Beauty and the Beast is because of this supposed thing of LeFou being gay. So not only is LeFou, if he was gay, an irrelevant side <laughs> gay character, he's just a gay stereotype. His character is entirely based off of them finding opportunities to make gay jokes and then stringing them together. In the bar scene when they're singing Gaston, there's the one line that was in the original song, they'll tell you whose team they prefer to be on, but in the movie when they say that, it's like everybody looks at LeFou. And they'll tell you whose team they prefer to be on. And then he turns their heads around like, haha, gay people, you know them. I play for the other team. So funny. There's enough There's points enough. of evidence where you could say that Gaston and LeFou are actually in some sort of gay relationship and they're just trying to hide it. Like also in the song Gaston, LeFou like grabs Gaston by the hands and does this like rappy thing around him to show him off. And then LeFou's like, too much? And Gaston's like, yep. yep. 
Have they talked about this before? <laughs> <laughs> or the fact that for some reason LeFou has bite marks from Gaston. Oh my god. In a wrestling match, nobody bites like Gaston. <laughs> and like LeFou lifts up his shirt. Why? Then there's also the scene at the end where Gaston's trying to convince LeFou to lie. And he walks over with him and he like grabs his shoulder and kind of like flirts with him slash seduces him in a way that gets LeFou to lie. But then they make this other joke that doesn't make sense to me if you're trying to say LeFou is gay. How is it no girl has snatched you up yet? I've been told I'm clingy, but I really don't get it. And then I'm sitting there like, is that a gay joke that's just going over my head? Gaston knows, but also doesn't, that LeFou may or may not be gay. Aside from all the points we just made, there's a lot of other random gay jokes. Like all of these jokes. Al can be as argumentative as she is beautiful. Exactly. Who needs her when you've got us? It's never gonna happen, ladies. I used to be on Gaston's side, but we are so in a bad place right now. You're too good for him. I'm not done with you yet. Me neither. Whenever they need to make a joke of who's gay, they choose when he is and when he isn't and when it matters even though it really shouldn't matter at all. LeFou's not the only gay character in this movie. In the mob, there were three guys and the wardrobe lady. Her thing is making people over, so in order to attack them, she made them over into women. Two of them were like, what the hell? But the third one, he was like, oh, I'm pretty now. <laughs> By itself, we don't have a problem with that yeah. in Underdog. But in the final scene, when they're in the ballroom dancing, he like bumps into LeFou and they like spin around each other for a second. We didn't need to force a gay romance. It's also mixing together the ideas of like cross-dressing, gender ambiguity, and being gay. It's and saying all they're all the same thing. thing, basically. Yeah. yeah. All of this for some jokes. In every movie where they're trying to show somebody is gay, they also need to be more feminine. Which yeah. I find annoying because gay guys are little crossbows. <laughs> <laughs> we at Underdog are going to give this movie a negative 43, which is Underdog, Underdog Disapproves. <laughs> so if you guys have anything that we missed, and if you have any ideas of what you want to see us talk about next on Underdog Approved, just comment below. Hi, it's me, Olivia. Thank you so much for watching that video. If you liked it, then be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Underdog Comics. Also, be sure to hit the bell icon so you'll be notified every time we post a new video. Bye! Perfect. <laughs>